Chief! Hey, I've been meaning to ask you something. Yeah, what's that, Carol? Did you hear that Congress has appropriated money for the staffing for adequate fire and emergency response grants? Yeah, yeah, the uh, SAFER program, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard about it. D did you apply for a grant? I thought the SAFER grants were about hiring firefighters. This is a volunteer unit. Right, right. The SAFER grant isn't just about hiring firefighters. Uh, volunteer and combination departments can also apply for a grant to recruit and retain volunteer firefighters. Really? Yeah. Huh. I wonder what we could apply for. Well, funny you should ask. I've been looking into it, and I may have a few answers. Do you have a few minutes? Sure. Let's go get a cup of coffee, and you can fill me in. Great. Okay. okay. You. <laughs> well, the purpose of the SAFER grant is to increase the department's operational capabilities. What do you think would increase the number of volunteer firefighters in our department, or at least keep our current members active? Well, as you know, a number of members have left because they can barely afford to fill their gas tanks to go back and forth to work, much less all that's required by the department. I know. Uh, well, cash awards can also be eligible to help with that as long as we have a clear project plan and the awards are linked to operational services. Really? Like what? Well, I found where one department was awarded a SAFER grant that provides a mileage reimbursement or a stipend to their members to help offset their expenses. The program pays the firefighters a set number of dollars on a monthly basis for responding to calls and attending training. Uh, the members then, they, they respond to a certain number of uh, logged calls and documented training to be eligible for the program. That's good to know. Or we could be reimbursed for other travel costs like lodging, a per diem if our members have to travel to attend training, or for lost wages while attending calls or training. No kidding. Uh, would I kid you? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, but not this time. Hey, do you want to go sit down? Sure. Okay. We'll talk about it some more. Anything else we can apply for? Uh, well, let's see. Um. There's tuition assistance, insurance packages, awards for participation or length of service. Nice. Oh, how about marketing costs for billboards, flyers, and brochures? <laughs> even TV and radio ads. Mm, very impressive. And we can even get money for salaries for recruitment and retention coordinators. Yeah, but isn't there a five-year match? I mean, that's something that's not going to fly with the jurisdiction. There is no local match required for the recruitment and retention awards. These grants provide 100% reimbursement. No match? None whatsoever. Wow, no match. That's good. But isn't it hard to get a safer retention and recruitment grant? How does FEMA know what will work? I mean, every department has different reasons for why they can't get enough volunteer firefighters to respond to calls well that's why safer is managed differently safer is a program-based grant you can link your activities to issues identified with volunteer recruitment and retention <laughs> okay so give me another reason why we've lost members well we lost five members when Lieutenant Tully broke his leg during a training exercise. That's a good one. Now, tell me, why did we lose five members when only one broke his leg? Because although the department has workers' compensation, it really doesn't pay enough for a family to live on. Lieutenant Tully's roofing business really got behind on its bills while he was out. Mm -hmm. A lot of the other firefighters said they couldn't risk their day jobs. Lieutenant Tully will be back, but we can't promise that no one will be hurt. Well, here's another way that a SAFER grant can help. Our department can supply a grant to give volunteers an insurance package that includes uh, disability, accidental death, and dismemberment coverage. With that insurance protection, an injured firefighter wouldn't have to go through the financial crisis because he was temporarily unable to work. If we're awarded, we might not lose staff for fear of uncompensated injuries. I wonder if health insurance would be eligible. You know, a lot of firefighters don't have any. Yep, health insurance is eligible too. And there are more examples in the safer guidance. 
but you can get creative too and, and figure out new ways that our department can recruit and retain members. Well, you sold me. How do we apply for one of these retention and recruitment grants? Well, we can start at www.fema.gov slash fire grants. You'll find the safer program guidance, the application tutorial, and other helpful material there. So, I go there and download the program like we do for AFG, Assistance to Firefighters Grants. Does that mean there are program priorities like with AFG? Yeah, that's right. Like I said before, the main objective is to help departments that do not have enough trained volunteers available to respond to calls and perform firefighting operations. You can measure our department's ability to meet NFPA 1710 or 1720 as a baseline of how badly you need more staff. Right. So now NFPA 1720, that's mm -hmm. the national standard right. for organization and deployment of fire suppression operations by volunteer departments. Right, and 1710 is the, is the career department standard. Right. Right. Now, I wonder where we'd fit on that baseline. Well, um, as a suburban volunteer fire department, are we able to assemble 10 firefighters for a structure fire call within, say, 10 minutes, 80% of the time? Eh, probably not. You can find out where we stand by checking the data our department has submitted to the National Fire Incident Reporting System, which, by the way, we can use to back up our grant request. We probably get, I don't know, 10 firefighters at uh, one of our calls maybe 30% of the time. Well, based on those numbers, we're a prime candidate for SAFER. The grants are designed to help departments implement formal plans to recruit and retain operational firefighters. The goal is to increase the number of trained, certified, and competent firefighters who are capable of responding to local emergencies. That's good to hear. The recruitment and retention awards will provide the most benefit to departments that are all or mostly volunteer because the grant activities address problems such as low volunteer recruitment and retention rates. We can take up to four years to complete our activities, but we have to have a formal plan. Good, good. Now, you've mentioned having a plan before. How do we create a plan? First, you need to know what problems to address. What recruitment challenges do you have? What reasons do members give for cutting their hours or leaving the department? How does your incident response compare to the NFPA standard for your service area? I think we should be able to pull all that information together without a hassle, don't you? Sure. Now, when those questions are answered, you would need to determine a program to address the identified problems. What can you do to fix the problem or problems? Look to see if any of the activities funded by the SAFER grant can address those problems. Good. Makes sense. Next, you'll need to develop a strategy to implement the program. You need to ask yourself, what are the specific or per unit costs? How are those costs determined? Who will be eligible? What criteria will members have to meet to be eligible for the program? Uh, how will records be maintained to document member eligibility and performance? Um, how will incentive be distributed to the members and, and when? Um, include in your plans how the project will continue after the period of performance because it may be viewed more favorably if R&R activities can continue. That's quite a list. And we can find all of this information on the website, right? Sure can. In the latest version of the Safer Guidance and other documents that are all on the website. Okay. Well, I'm sure we'll be able to answer all these questions and pull together a plan. We've got a good team here, but we need to get busy now. I know. But first, they talk about some uh, common mistakes that applicants have made with recruitment and retention applications. Let me get these down. I've got them here. Um, the first is waiting until the last minute to start planning their project and grant application. Makes sense. Yeah, or not having a carefully devised strategy or plan to implement their grant activities is one. Um, asking for activities that don't meet their members' needs is another. Uh, also, creating complicated plans that become too hard to administer. That makes sense. Any others? Yeah. 
Um, they have asking for more activities uh, than they can reasonably manage or not having a specific person or committee to manage grant activities. Yeah, no specific person or committee to manage it. Mm -hmm. I can see that as a problem. This is good information. Good. Now, the biggest mistake that you can make when applying for a SAFER or any of the assistance to firefighters grant opportunities is not reading the current program guidance. The SAFER guidance and application kit has everything I've told you, but the guidance contains a lot more that you need to know before applying. And you know where to find it, right? <laughs> www.fema.gov slash fire grants. <laughs> um, know it by heart. Uh, well, that's about it. Yeah, I think we should go for one. I'll work with you. I like it, Carol. Thanks for taking the time to go over this with me. Sure. I sure. think we should apply for one. Just let me know when you're ready to get started. I'll do it. And I've got to run, but I will leave my notes with you. Okay. Okay. Great. Thanks. Bye. See you later.